Hello, this is Archie Dunlop with Talking Astrology with Archie on Friday, March the 10th, 2023. Today I want to talk about the horoscope of Vladimir Putin. I mean, that's only fair because a couple of days ago I looked at uh, Zelensky's chart. So it would be an interesting comparison um, to compare the two men. But there is a problem with Vladimir Putin's chart, as I will soon discuss, is that we don't have a time of birth. I mean, there are times of birth which have been circulated, but they are unreliable. So we will have to deal with a chart that is untimed. Anyway, before I talk about Vladimir Putin, I want to talk about the stars for today, Friday, March the 10th, 2023. So here is the chart for noon today set for New York. I mean, I'm setting it for New York because it's a matter of convenience. Oh, if you want to know who uh, this guy is up here, well, you know who that is. It's uh, Osama bin Laden and it is his 66th birthday. At least it would, be, it would have been his 66th birthday if he hadn't have been killed um, by the Americans, the people who in some respects created him. Um, Osama bin Laden obviously is a Pisces. Uh, he is in many respects a typical Pisces. Pisces is about surrendering yourself to something larger than yourself. Um, it's about absorbing yourself in the great sea and what better way to absorb your, absorb yourself in the great sea is martyrdom martyring yourself for a higher cause um, the issue is not you know it's not about whether it's a good cause or a bad cause it's about being a cause um, and perhaps it was what he was always been looking for he i believe he had a load of siblings and so maybe he didn't get much attention when he was young. Uh, I think his father got killed in a car in a plane crash. Um, so a difficult childhood. He had a lot of money um, but perhaps he felt there was just no point uh, and he found his point thanks to the United States of America. You know in the United States of America that great state sponsor of terrorism, getting more stuff about Nord Stream 2. Um, they claim it's some private Ukrainian group who did it, but, you know, it was them, it was the United States. And they are, you know, the United States with the Uranus on the seventh house cusp is a terrorist state. It claims it's not. It claims it's fighting a war against terrorism. And here, Osama bin Laden he was created by the United States because they poured money and resources into Afghanistan as a way of stopping a, the Soviet invasion. Uh, in a sense, they were successful, but unfortunately, they created a monster that they really know what they were doing. So I kind of feel a bit sorry for Osama bin Laden being led astray by the United States. Um, but that's what they do. Um, they... Um, use people, destroy them, and um, claim it's not their fault. So, um, I would be wishing happy, him a happy birthday, but he's not alive. America killed him. So, as far as today's stars are concerned, the moon is in late Libra. Um, now, in astrology, late Libra, early Scorpio, is, is the via combustor, the burning path. And when the moon moves through the Via Combustor, late Libra, early Scorpio, uh, strange things happen. You know, you make your plans, everything's sorted out, and then something goes wrong. Um, it may not be bad, but it's just not what you plan for. So today, when you make your plans, always have a standby plan because Nothing is quite as it seems. Um, the moon, I should say, is um, making 
an 120 degree trine aspect to Mars, um, that means we will have a lot of energy at our disposal. So if we want something to happen, we can really push it, um, be assertive, and it might feel great, but the results of our assertion may not be what we expect. Now, let's talk about Vladimir Putin. So here's his chart. Um, I found a picture of him with a dog. He's a great dog lover. Um, now, just because you're a dog lover doesn't necessarily mean you're a nice person. I mean, Hitler was a great dog, dog lover. Hitler apparently let his um, German shepherds uh, sleep on his bed. Um, so that does, that's, not, that's not a reason to like someone. Um, but uh, is he a monster? Can we tell whether he's a monster from his horoscope? So this horoscope that I've set up here is, as I said, it hasn't got an ascendant because I don't have a time of birth that I really can, can rely on. Um, but we do know that he has got his son in Libra. Um, that might sound strange at first sight to have someone as powerful as him with the sun in Libra. The sun does not work well in Libra, um, particularly in a male chart. This is because the sun, the sun is exalted in Aries and it is therefore fallen in the opposite sign of, Ari of, of Libra. Now, there are some famous Librans who've done very well in politics, and I'm thinking particularly of Margaret Thatcher. Uh, she was a woman, though, so it wouldn't have been so difficult for her um, asserting herself. But apparently Margaret Thatcher, you know, she was, she was a better listener than some people give her credit for. She did seek advice behind closed doors, and, and you know, she has this image of being fairly dictatorial. But... Uh, she did have a decisive streak that the public didn't actually see. Now, as far as Putin is concerned, his critics in Russia would certainly argue that his son in Libra was not very um, constructive. Um, he has got a lot of criticism in Russia for his invasion of Ukraine. Uh, the criticism comes from a point he from a point of view that he has been indecisive about it. Uh, he didn't go in all the way. I mean, if the Americans had been invading Ukraine, he would have just, they would have just flattened the country in the first week with their, with their air force. But so he, like many Librans, made assumptions about how the Russians would be treated in Ukraine. Um, he thought they could basically walk in and that they could... Um, come to some kind of accommodation and just leave and you know it wouldn't you know you could avoid some huge bloody battle uh sorry huge war but he could he somehow thought he could do that and that showed a certain amount of naivety libra i think his libra we saw his libra nature you know since 2014 you know when you know when he was supporting the don you know when he was involving himself in the Donbass and negotiating with the West. And it seems, you know, the West, to an extent, um, I think I think they fooled him. Um, they made promises to him that they would respect um, Russia's interest and its red lines and so forth um, in eastern Ukraine. Um, and they didn't. Um, and that may that this Libran sense in Putin, you know, does does suggest a certain amount of naivety, perhaps, or maybe he's someone who just hoped for the best. He wanted to believe the best. He tried his hardest to get the right balance between East and West in the Ukraine, and that's what he did. He tried, and ultimately he failed. Now, what I've just said might seem. A Russian view, um, but it's a view, um, and we just mustn't get into this idea that he is, that he is some kind, that he is a monster. That I don't, I don't think that's, I don't really think that's the case. Um, 
from his from from his horoscope. Um, we also have to consider the fact that he has a Saturn Uranus square. He's got Saturn in Libra, square Uranus in Cancer, and now this whole U invasion of Ukraine um, happened when there was a Saturn square. So it was kind of echoing what Putin had in his horoscope anyway. And um, for Putin, I suspect the Saturn-Uranus cycle is very important. And the biggest trauma in his life was the fall of the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union fell while there was a Saturn-Uranus conjunction. So he is, um, has been very influenced by this. Um, now, as far as this reputation that Putin has for being unpleasant and vindictive, and one can think of um, the poisonings. Um, you know, we've got Navalny, who was supposed, who was uh, poisoned with nerve gas on a plane. He was an opposition leader in um, in Russia. We got Litvinenko, who was a, a Russian in um, London, who was uh, poisoned. This time, a polonium with a radioactive element um, had a horrible death, and maybe. This is the Venus in Scorpio. Now, I'm not, I don't know whether Putin knew anything about it, but, you know, when Putin, when P Putin, when Putin started, took over America, took over Russia, his chart became Russia's chart in the same way that Zelensky's chart is Ukraine's chart. And that Venus in Scorpio that Putin has is quite vindictive. It's very different from his Libra than his Libra planets. Scorpio, that Venus in Scorpio, um, I think bears grudges. Um, it makes him um, quite, quite difficult, perhaps in, certainly in relationships, and also he's someone you don't want to cross with Venus in Scorpio. So that's, um, that's, that is something to consider. Um, so as far as uh, the overall impression is concerned, you know, when I looked at his chart, his chart doesn't doesn't uh, do much for me. I mean, I, it's not a chart I find exciting. Um, you know, there are a couple of points to to notice. He has got, uh, let's see, he's got Pluto on the Mars Saturn. Mars, Uranus, and Mars, Neptune midpoint. So Pluto is a planet of transformation. Pluto on a Mars, Saturn midpoint is quite deadly. Mars, Saturn is the death pair. He's got Pluto there. Uh, Mars, Uranus is about gunfire, war, and so forth, creating transformation through death and destruction. Uh, even if that is not his intention, that midpoint really, really stirs it up. So I think, yeah, I think his Pluto is certainly worth looking at in terms of the mid, in terms of that midpoint. But uh, you know, there's still something about this chart that makes me think that it's not, you know, it's not, it, you know, when we looked at Zelensky's chart, so let's get a really strong chart. I, I don't regard Putin as having a really strong chart. You know, one wonders what would be happening if Putin didn't exist. Um, is he? Is this? A, is this the chart of someone who's really going to change the world, and is irreplaceable? Um, and I think the answer is: if he didn't exist, there'd be someone else. You know, we think about you know this Ukraine war, and everyone in the West says Putin says it's Putin's war. Putin's war. It's all about Putin. You know, if Putin didn't exist, and let's say, or was just some non-entity. Uh, who would be running Russia? Someone else. Some other politician. What if, what, if, what if Russia had decided to bring back the monarchy after communism had f fallen and we had a czar? What would be going on? We'd still have a war. Even if there was, yeah, a czar in Russia would still feel the need to have a war against Ukraine. Um, some democratic president likewise. 
if if they kept communism, it would still be the case. So I'm I don't think that um, that Putin is is really responsible for this, and I think I think his chart his chart is not very strong. Um, uh, I I. I, don't, I just don't think he's the kind of person that has made something happen. I think it would have happened anyway. And particularly, as I've just said, there are a lot of people in Russia who don't like his Libran approach. They feel he's been too soft. Um, they feel he's been too too quick to want to compromise, too, too quick to want to deal with his opponents. So that's, that's his Libra. Chart and it, it that's his that's his son in Libra and I do also think that there is a big problem. We simply don't have his time of birth, and it's so difficult to say anything meaningful without the time of birth. Anyway, um, that is all I've got to say uh, on the subject of Putin. Um, I hope that I haven't upset anyone. I know people get really upset about Ukraine. You can't, you cannot really express what you think without without causing upset. You know, I'm I'm old. I remember the Falklands War. I was in England during the Falklands War. People in England were critical of the British government. They were, they they want some of them wanted wanted Britain to lose. Um, they no one no they didn't they didn't get uh, any flack people could say what they like even when britain was against was in a war and the falkland islands had been invaded by the argent by a fascist regime in argentina still in england people expressed different viewpoints but with ukraine no there's only one viewpoint and that need that we need to think about that very carefully about what is going on in the collective unconscious but that's a subject for another day, and I will talk to you tomorrow on Saturday.